Today we're going to show you how you can create your very own wall art prints. These have become super, super popular and they're often quite expensive in the shops. However, they are so easy to make and you can actually go wild with your colours and you can go wild with your subject. We're going to be showing you exactly how to do it in a really inexpensive and fun way. The great thing about these prints are you don't have to be too precise. So as you can see here, I've gone for quite an illustrated look, but I've kept it quite naive and abstract in style. The other great thing is you don't need heaps of art equipment. I've just used a canvas paper, but you can be really creative. You could use some old newspaper, old magazines to paint on. If you've got some old cardboard, you can experiment on painting on that. So you can really go wild and have a little bit of an experiment with your own prints. We found a really nice way of doing this is picking the frame first. So you can get these quite cheaply just in a lot of homeware shops or you can go to charity shops, get vintage secondhand frames. It's always quite fun choosing what you think will look good in your home and then creating the painting for that frame. So don't worry, we're going to be talking you through exactly how we've done this, exactly how we've marked up our border, how we place the painting in the frame. So this is going to be a super fun activity. So let's jump straight into the tutorial. <laughs> so I have my frame here and then over here I have a piece of canvas paper. So this is still quite thin but it's got a canvas consistency so it is for painting and I feel like it should work quite well for our painting that we're going to pop in our frame. So before we start we just want to prepare the paper to fit the frame. So you're going to need some scissors and a pencil. So first up, I'm just going to turn this frame over and we're just going to open it up. So just remove the backing of your frame. You can just pop it down to the side for now. Now we just want to remove the paper that comes with the frame and we want to pull out the mount. So what we want to do with this is we just want to draw around the mount on our piece of paper or card or whatever you're using just so we know the rough framing for our painting. So just move all your bits and bobs out the way for a moment and just stick with your mount and your piece of paper. Next we're just going to take our mount and I would just say make sure you're turning it over just while we draw our border in and then just taking your pencil you can just draw along the outline, just so we know where we're going with our painting. Just press really, really lightly. So if you want to, you can rub it out. So this is your chance just to check how big your piece of paper is. Mine is too big to actually fit in the frame, so I'm just gonna cut it down slightly. So you can pop your mount to the side for a moment and you just want to set up your painting station. So I've got here my kitchen towel, a paintbrush, my cup of water and my palette with my paints on. So I'm actually only going to use two shades. I've got blue and white here just because I want to keep this painting nice and simple. Now the fun thing about this is we're just going to go a little bit wild. I'm keeping to a really abstract, almost quite a naive kind of style with my painting. And I sometimes think with these prints that you see, the simpler you go, the better. Because if you want to add more afterwards, you always can. So I'm just going to start having a little bit of an experiment, really. So picking up my small brush, I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the bristles just to loosen them up. So I'm just going to mix up a slightly lighter shade of blue. So I'm going to pick up all of my blue, or almost all of my blue. I like to keep a little bit in here just in case I want a darker shade later. And then to this, I'm just going to start adding a little bit of white and giving it a good mix just to lighten up the shade slightly. Now, because I want quite a wash-like consistency, I'm just going to start adding some water into this paint and then giving it a good mix. So whenever you're happy, you can just start painting away. Just 
decide what you want to do and just start having a little experiment, just paint whatever you like. So because I'm going for a face, I'm just going to very carefully start with my eye. And again, because I'm just doing quite a, like a, a naive like painting, I don't want to be too precise. I'm just sort of marking out what I want to do. So I've got eyes and then I've got eyebrow here because I'm keeping it quite abstract. I might actually join the eyebrow up with the nose. You want to just add more water to your paintbrush. If you want to go for a little bit more of a watered down consistency. Go to the lips. So I'm just really kind of almost making small little marks and suggestions on my canvas. And if you don't like what you're painting, you can always go over it with something else. You could always use a different colour. It's totally up to you, really. I think sometimes it's just nice to have a little bit of an experiment. Just remember, you don't want to be too neat with this. Even with drawing in the face, I'm just sort of being quite free. Obviously, you don't have to do a face either. If you wanted to, you could do flowers or anything you want, really. Plants. Symbols, sun and moon, anything goes. It's quite good because I know where the borders are. You can either keep your painting within the borders or if you want to, you can kind of go off the borders as well. Remember, you just you don't you can't go wrong with painting. You can literally do anything you want. You can keep going over and over until you're happy. And if you don't like what you're doing, you can just start again. But sometimes I think that the best paintings come from making little mistakes or not being happy with the shape. I feel like, especially when you're painting faces, you can really do anything you want. Like look at some of Picasso's faces. They're extremely abstract. He almost just uses shapes to create the cheeks and the eyes and the neck and the ears so it's nice just to be a bit free with what you're doing earrings in because why not I love an earring <laughs> then if you want you can start adding flowers or leaves And I'm just, I'm like holding the paintbrush right at the very, very end, which I sometimes find helps you be a little bit more abstract. Sometimes it's quite hard to let go of control. We all need to let go of control a bit more sometimes. <laughs> so I find that holding the paintbrush at the end, you don't have as much control. So naturally your lines are going to be a little bit more wobbly. It's also quite fun to experiment with 
not looking at your canvas. I know that that sounds weird, but you end up creating some amazing shapes when you're not focusing on what you're doing, or you could use the opposite hand that you write with and see what happens. Might even just like to try adding a little bit of water to your brush, dabbing off any excess and then just going in with a bit of a, a wash consistency. So you could start like adding a little bit of shadow, just using that water on your brush. Just give me some cheeks by using that water. Sometimes I think not overthinking it is good as well. If you want to do something, just do it. Don't over question it. Might even add a bit of white to the middle of those flowers. like a messy hair look. So I'm adding a few little scraggles of hair coming out. Remember you can go over these lines because We've allowed a little bit of space around our border so they'll look like they're kind of flowing off the side of the painting if you want them to. quite like this look where you've got the plant like looking shape but then you've got little leaves coming off them. Again you can see how quickly I'm doing this and really not overthinking it at all and actually sometimes it's knowing when to stop. <laughs> because you can just carry on and on and you might overdo it. I think if you do want that simplistic look for these, it's nice just to, to stop once you're happy.
Okay, I'm going to stop. So all you want to do now is give your paintbrush a good wash and let your painting dry. I forgot to say that of course you can also sign your masterpiece. So I'm just gonna write my name in a little squiggle. Might even do it up the side actually, around here. Laura. There we go. Nice and hidden. What I now like to do when my painting's dry is just take a rubber and just carefully rub out those pencil marks that we made of our border. So you now just need your mount and I also recommend some sellotape or some masking tape. All we're going to do now is just carefully place our mount on top of our painting. So just decide where you want it to be. It can be roughly where you had the pencil lines or you can just sort of change it slightly if you want. Just make sure you're happy and then just push it down and then very carefully, you just want to turn the canvas over. <laughs> So just place it, almost have your hand underneath if you want, just so you can turn it over quite easily. So just make sure you're happy with the placement. Hold it in place. I'll try to bring it up a little bit. Hold it in place and then turn it over really carefully. Now all we're going to do is just take our masking tape and we're just gonna carefully place the masking tape on each corner just to stick it to the mount so it doesn't move. Just make sure it's nice and flushed to the mount so you haven't got any creases in it. I would then just recommend taking a little bit more masking tape and just sticking down these edges as well. So once you have added all of the masking tape to the back of the mount and it's all stuck in securely, we're now just going to place it face down in our frame. I just say be careful not to touch the frame or the glass or the plastic too much so you don't get all your fingerprints on it. Next up we're just going to take the back and I would just make sure that you're keeping the tab to the top so if you want it in portrait like I'm having it this tab's going to be at the top but if you've done yours in landscape just make sure that bit's at the top. Then we're just going to place it carefully into our frame and close it all up. Ta-da! And there you have your very own homemade art wall print. And now it's time for the fun bit, hanging it on the wall. If you like this tutorial, then don't forget to give us a little thumbs up. It helps us out massively. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have so many new art and craft tutorials going live every week. Thanks everyone and see you all again next time.